Okay, this is in this chapter, I think we're in chapter 11, the second lab, when it's double replacement reaction between sodium carbonate and calcium chloride, day one and day two. Label with this lab everything with tape and your name. And here's kind of, we have to end with the lab with a filter paper. So you need to have that ready to go from the beginning. So this is the double replacement reaction lab between calcium chloride and sodium carbonate. I gave you a lab paper, I had two labs on either side. This is the second one. Before you do anything else, get a filter paper, write your name in it on a few places. You're gonna fold this filter paper in half and you're gonna fold it in half again and you're gonna put it in a funnel with three pieces on one side and one on the other and not any other way because that won't work. Three on one side and one on the other, not two and two and leave a hole in your stuff runs through. One on one side, three on the other. Now, because that's all gonna end up all folded up, what if your name's old down in here? So you put your name here, you put your name here, you put your, turn it over, put your name on it three different places so you have your name on here somewhere where you can read it when we're all done, not once. Okay? Because we're all done, we have to weigh that to start, and we have to weigh it when we're done. It's gonna be one of the first thing and the last thing you do, probably. Okay, so you are going to dissolve two reactant solutes. This is a double replacement reaction. It's gonna occur in water solution, aqueous solution, and you will get a precipitate. So we've talked about this, but we haven't done it yet. Okay, I will have some paper cut up, just regular copy paper that's been used for something that's extra cut up, and they'll make some weighing papers. We'll put some sodium carbonate on this, washing soda. And we need to know the mass of it. Well, you gotta weigh it on here, and then put some on, weigh it again, subtract to get the mass of this. We'll do the same thing with calcium chloride. We'll weigh the paper, put some calcium chloride on it, Weigh it again, subtract, that's the mass of the calcium chloride. When you go to do the calculations in the lab, you don't calculate, use the mass of both of these for the calculation, it's just the chemical. So you have to subtract the paper off. So you have to weigh it before, together, subtract, just the chemical, that's what gets used in the calculation. If you come up with a number using your calculator, you've got to use the number for something else. You don't find it and leave it sit there. So you have to find the mass of sodium carbonate and the mass of calcium chloride so we can do mass to moles to moles to mass. Now what you're gonna do with that sodium carbonate, now what else should you do with these papers? Label them before you start. Label everything, label every paper, label yourself, label the filter paper, label the, every piece of glassware you use. Label your lab partner. Okay, so the paper's labeled. That way you know what the chemical is when it's on there. Label the beakers. Then you're gonna put the sodium carbonate in a beaker and the calcium chloride in a labeled beaker. We're gonna dissolve them in the water. It really doesn't matter how much water we use because they're gonna be dissolved. And that's the way you get the chemicals into ion form so they can be exposed to one another to do the reaction. But you don't wanna to use too much water because then you have to get all that water through a filter paper. If you use a couple grams of each, you can fit it in 30 milliliters of water. Okay, this one, calcium chloride dissolves pretty quick. The other one, it takes a little more time. Okay, so if I were you, I would be measuring the mass of this first to get it in the water. So, it, you know, and then every couple of minutes you can pick it up, swirl the water and set it back down. So it's got time. The calcium chloride will dissolve quicker. It, this can be, the sodium carbonate can be working on dissolving while you're working on the calcium chloride to weigh it and everything else. So you get those dissolved in water. After they're dissolved in water, here they are, after they dissolve, floating around. We've got sodium carbonate in gray, uh, calcium chloride in a darker color. Now, when you get them both dissolved, you come at, get me and I'll take a look at it and if I think they're dissolved, I'll put them together for you. 
Now, in terms of dissolving, what's happening from here to here is you are taking solid sodium carbonate in water, turning it into two sodium ions and a carbonate ion. You're taking solid calcium chloride here in water, turning it into calcium ions and two chloride ions. And when you put those two together, or when I put those two together, there's a certain let me do that for you, you'll get better lab results. You don't want to mix it too little and you don't want to mix it too much. When you swirl that together just right, it makes a nice gel that really collects a lot of product. So if you put those together, it'll make a precipitate that'll settle to the bottom. And then your spectator ions, the ones that aren't reacting, the sodium and the chlorine, chloride ions, they're just there. Now, what will happen is, if you let me mix this right and it makes a gel, it won't precipitate to the bottom. The whole thing will kind of be like a gel. So we're going to skip to this ionic equation. You're exposing two sodium ions and carbonate ions that are here to calcium ions and two chloride ions that are here, and when you dump them all together, you get spectator ions and a precipitate, which are sodium and chloride ions are the spectators, calcium carbonate is the precipitate. So we're chemically manufacturing chalk dust here. So you are used to seeing this chemical equation as sodium carbonate aqueous plus calcium chloride aqueous gives us sodium chloride aqueous and calcium carbonate solid. This is the precipitate. This is right, but I want you to be able to write the ionic equation also. This is called the empirical equation. I don't have this written on the board, but this is also called the empirical equation. Okay, so if we take those spectator ions out, I'm not sure I can do that here. Yeah, can't do that with this marker, but I can do it with this one. If I take these spectator ions out, then what's left is the ionic equation, net ionic equation, net ionic equation, net ionic equation. Calcium ions, two positive, plus carbon ions, carbonate ions, gives us calcium carbonate. Now, once you have done the reaction, and made this precipitate. And remember, making a precipitate is one a piece of evidence for a reaction. Then we gotta collect that in the filter paper. So I'll put sodium carbonate on a filter paper. You know, weigh the filter paper. Or it's, let me back up. You weigh a weighing paper, that is labeled. Put some sodium carbonate on it, weigh it again. Subtract, put sodium carbonate in here. Put about 30 milliliters of water. Don't spend much time measuring the water volume, you're just dissolving it. Doesn't matter how much you have too closely. This is labeled sodium carbonate. So you get a weighing paper for calcium chloride. Put your name on it, calcium chloride, put some, weigh it, put some calcium chloride in, weigh it again, subtract, put the calcium chloride in the labeled beaker calcium chloride. Put about 30 milliliters of water is all this. Once they're dumped together, I'll dump those together. Through, they go through your filter paper with your filter. Three on one side, one on the other. Scoop. Pour that in there. Hopefully it'll be kind of a nice gel. Don't swirl it. Try to keep it into a nice intact gel. When you're all done, getting out what you can, you can maybe try a uh, rubber police bin to try to get a little more into here. Now the very first thing you did was get this guy name on it and weighed back at the beginning of the lab. Because when you're done and your precipitate or your uh, supernatant, all the stuff that's not precipitate, you got precipitate in here. The stuff that pours off is called supernatant. It's got your spectator in it, ions in it. We're done with this. This is your chemically manufactured chalk dust, calcium carbonate, that we have to dry out. 
And by the way, when you want to pour this through there, you get a ring stand with a ring stand, a ring stand with a ring, and a, a, a ceramic triangle, and that'll sit right in it. Just put a beaker under there to collect your supernatant off that you're going to discard. Okay, so then this will be wet. You take this out, and we'll leave it dry overnight. On the second day, we can weigh it again. We might have to leave it sit a couple days. Uh, we don't have, it. this is if I can put it in sort of, sort of a drying oven to speed it up. If it sets over a weekend, it's about right. So let me check the time here. Okay, got a couple minutes. So when you do the lab write up, what you are doing is going from grams to grams, grams to moles to moles to grams to see which one is limiting. You have to do this calculation, grams to moles to moles to grams, twice. Take the first one to figure out how much of the second one you should have, should need. Compare it to what you got, determine which one is limiting. And take that one, the limiting one, to run the calculation to go grams to moles to moles to grams of product. Okay, I'll maybe have to help you with that in another video. But to recap that, take your first one, the grams that you had on the balance that you subtracted to get, convert it to moles, to moles of this, to grams of this. That's how many grams of this you need. Do you have that many or more? If the answer is yes, this one's limiting. If you don't have that many or more on the actual paper, then this is limiting, and you use it to calculate the other one. 